Hey guys, my name is Matimio, and today the addiction continues with Red Orchestra 2. I've been trying to slowly wean myself off of this game. I'll tell myself, all right, we're only gonna play for an hour because we have to get some work done. Four hours proceed to go by, no work was done because this game was ridiculously amazing and I was having an absolute blast. This is happening way too often in my life. Uh, one thing that I've been trying to do more and more in the game though, is playing with the different classes to discover if they have a unique playstyle associated with them, but more specifically, using the automatic weapons. The backbone of every army in Red Orchestra are the riflemen who use the bolt action rifles. The great thing about the bolt action rifles is that they hit extremely extremely hard. You hit basically anyone in the body, they're gonna die in one bullet, but also they're very accurate for those long range shots as well. The downside is that they have a slow rounds per minute. Every single time that you squeeze a trigger, you have to put another bullet in the chamber, and so if you round a corner and there's even just two people in front of you, it doesn't even need to be a mass horde, it can just be two people staring in your direction, doesn't matter usually how good you are, you're gonna die simply because of that slower RPM. As for the automatic weapons though, only a few classes have access to them, and I'm assuming this is this is for balancing reasons, because if you know how to use these correctly, you can devastate the enemy team. Like, it's ridiculous how awesome they are. Uh, the downside of them, of course, is it's quite obvious, is that, well, you're gonna have to deal with recoil, so they're not as good as a distance, they don't hit as hard as a bolt action rifle, but the real strength of them is that rounds per minute. It essentially forces you to play either very passively, waiting for the enemy to put push up onto your, one of your objectives if you're playing on the defensive team, or ridiculously aggressive so that you can close the gap on those users that are using bolt action rifles, where they're clearly going to have the advantage at a distance, get up close and personal where you can really take advantage of that RPM. These weapons have resulted in some of the most memorable moments that I've experienced in a first person shooter in this last year. It is, I cannot express how exhilarating it is to use these weapons on the battlefield. Here, for example, I knew the enemy was in a fortified building, but I was doing my best to flank around and get, in, get inside of there. Just killing three people in this game is exciting. Killing three, four, five, six people in a row makes your heart pound like no other video game out there. Because you know if you make one small mistake, you peek your head out of the wrong building, or if you don't even realize that you're leaving yourself exposed to an enemy, you are gonna be down on the ground very, very quickly. And it's because of that, when you're finally successful in getting that flank off that you've been working on for a while now, or you're just waiting on the enemy to come to you. You're playing defensively, you're on the objective, when you round the corner and you mow down five people instantaneously or the enemy rounds the bend and you take all three of them out in one burst with your automatic weapon, it is one of the most satisfying things that you can experience in a first person shooter and it is the reason why I continue to play this game over and over and over again for hours on end. Uh, one thing that these automatic rifles made me realize though is how much of a dramatic shift this must have caused on the battlefield. In real life, when we started to make the shift from you using bolt action rifles, single fire weapons, on over into the automatic territory. This is clearly demonstrated in Red Orchestra. If you are using a bolt action rifle, it's all about accuracy. It slows down the combat a little bit because you need to line up your shot. You don't have a thousand RPM weapon at your disposal. You're not able just to spray a million bullets down range hoping that one lands. You need to make sure that you're lining up the shot because if you miss, your enemy may not be as unlucky as you and your head might be blown off. As soon as we bring in this automatic firepower into the equation, while you're still gonna need to point and click at the enemy, I mean, you still need to be somewhat accurate, since you can put more bullets down range, you can not only suppress them a hell of a lot better, but also you can just hope and pray that one of them is gonna land and that's all you need to take them out. It must have been a dramatic shift in real life when we started to make that transition from bolt action single, single shot weapons into the automatic category. I I'm not sure why it took me this long to make that realization, but it's kinda cool and also makes sense gameplay wise why the developers limited how many classes have access to these automatic rifles because they they are ridiculously powerful, like they are simply amazing, and if everyone was able to use them, Red Orchestra 2 would be a completely different game. Uh, one thing that I did want to talk about really quickly though, because it just doesn't make any sense to me, 
is the squad leader class. The squad leader is the mobile spawn for your squad. It is a very important position. If you do not want to be running all the way from your deployment every single time you die, you want to have a squad leader that is near the objective so that you can get back into the action quickly. Like that is that is their main job. The thing about it though is that when I jumped in this position and I started playing the objective, assuming that's what I was supposed to do, my team was constantly yelling at me because I was dying all the time. I asked them, it's like, what do you want me to do? Do you want me to just to stay back away from the capture point? And they're like, yes, we want you to be a little bit close to where the action is, but not too close where you're leaving yourself vulnerable. Stay behind a copy hole and just camp there all game long and be our mobile spawn. I was like, really? This is, this is what spawn, squad leaders are all about? And then I thought back on past matches and then I realized... Yeah, that's actually, I think, what the developers were, were looking into because there are squad leaders that were at top of the scoreboard with maybe one or two kills, but all of their points and the reason why they were at the top of the scoreboard is because they were that mobile spawn. It just seems like a really wonky game design in my eyes. I love the teamwork. I love the fact that there is that team coordination, but I would just assume it would be way more beneficial to not have one person essentially going AFK around a capture point, being a mobile spawn. Why not have something that we have like in the Battlefield franchise, a spawn beacon, where then the squad leader can then get into the action and, and have that first person shooter experience. Maybe I'm completely off base. I realize the squad leader, another job that they have is to mark targets on the map for more Order strikes. That is a very important job of the squad leader, but it also still begs the question, why, why is their job basically not to shoot at anyone, be behind a cubby, and just sit there all game long being that mobile spawn? It seems a little bit bizarre. And so if there are any Red Orchestra veterans out there that can explain this to me, or if that's just exactly how the game is supposed to function, let me know down below. Uh, one thing that I wanted to mention really quickly before I take off for today is this Really cool story that I heard about the M1 Garand. This is an amazing weapon, but an iconic feature of it is that every single time that you need to reload or you're out of you're out of ammunition, it makes a very audible ping. The reason why this is important is that the Axis realized that this was a key feature of the weapon, and so every time they heard that audible ping on the battlefield, they would try to take advantage of it. If they knew that one guy was suppressing them from the rooftops, as soon as they heard that ping, that gave them the opportunity to either get a little bit closer or just get out of cover and move to a completely different position. The clever thing about the US soldiers though, and what I love about this, is that they realized that this was happening, they realized that the enemy was taking advantage of this audible ping, and so they would take their empty clips, throw them on the ground when they wanted to lure out the enemy out into the open, thinking that they were reloading, Nope, it was just this empty clip that they threw on the ground and it gave them free targets to shoot at. I'm not exactly sure how often this tactic was used because if you think about it, warfare is really loud. Explosions are happening everywhere. Mortar strikes are falling down all around you. How in the world are you gonna be able to hear a ping inside of a, a building across the street? Like that doesn't seem all that feasible, but if it's a smaller skirmish and if this, this story holds any weight, it really just demonstrates and showcases the resourcefulness that these soldiers had to try to get every advantage that they could. Uh, but yeah guys, that is about it for today's video. I hope you enjoyed the World War II action. <laughs> I know I did because I'm addicted to this game. Uh, but until tomorrow, have a good one and take it easy.